Hello, comrades! Welcome back to Workers and Resources! Never forget the resources. My name, of course, is Open Potato, and today we're having a little look at Potato Grad. You know what? I thought, you know what? We'll start out at Potato Grad because I wanted to see how, uh, how far the university has come on its journey to complete construction. And it looks like it is, what, like a third of the way there? It's mostly just workers, I think, that we really need to um, that we really need to to have on site in order to see it completed. So I think that there's a good chance that it'll be done somewhat in the near future. Looks like there's uh, there's now a little bit of a, a jump in activity. Uh, but anyway, there we go. Uh, so right, let's let's chat about let's chat about what still needs to be done and where we are in the fields. Harvesting is going very very well. Um, there were a couple of comments over the over the past couple of couple of episodes saying that I do need to get a distribution center up and running to assist in the transportation of crops from the field to the farm. And I think, honestly, I think we should start with that. Let's get that done and dusted because we've only got a very, very limited uh, harvesting window. So if we do that now, then we don't need to worry about that in the future. And then we can move on to... to the meat. The meat of this episode. The meat of this episode, which is hopefully... Which is hopefully going to put us uh, solidly in a positive financial situation. I'm not anticipating at all over the course of this episode, by the way, uh, or indeed going forward, that we're ever going to run out of any currency ever again. I know, I know, famous last words. Now that I've said it, I need to, I need to uphold, I need to uphold uh, that uh, that statement. However. What am I? What am I doing? I'm looking for distribution offices. Always hidden away from me. Uh, medium distribution office. That's just the ticket. Yeah. So I I don't think that we're gonna have any currency problems. I know that it may uh, it may occur, but I'm honestly doubtful that we will we will need to worry about that going forward. Let's just get this built. How much is this gonna cost? Forty six thousand rubles. Okay, that's a pretty considerable chunk of the uh, remaining currency that we do have sitting around, uh, which is less than ideal. But, uh, but honestly, if it allows us to move a little bit more of the grain from the fields, then we should be just fine. Uh, also, we probably need more tractors. I reckon we need, like, one tractor per field. Yeah. I, in fact, I think that's what we're gonna do. Let's have a little look at the mechanisms here. I say tractor. I meant harvester. We need at least three more harvesters. Let's get this moved to this depot here. And we'll basically just move, what, like four trucks, three trucks across? What did I say? Yeah. We'll move three trucks across. There we go. And then we will purchase two brand new harvesters. One, two. We'll purchase a third as soon as the... As soon as the third truck gets moved across. Which should be any moment now. There we go. Brilliant. And we'll get another harvester. And that... Should immediately... Oh, no. We need a fourth one as well. No, we just need three. We just need three. I'm not good at counting. My my maths is uh, my maths is off. Either way, the harvesters... The harvesters should be harvesting. Are we gonna... Are we gonna see any activity here? The trucks are leaving. Great news. But the harvesters are not. Very, very strange. Maybe we've already missed the... Maybe we've missed the boat for harvesting this season. I, I don't actually know. Anyway, here's the thing. Uh, we're going to assign all of the fields here. We're going to assign all of the fields as load up. If load... Yep, if storage percent is above zero. And then we are going to get the trucks to unload. Right over here. We're going to unload storage percent... Uh, Storage percent less than 90? Yeah, sure, I guess. All right, and that should mean that everything immediately is activated. Uh, we're probably just going to buy out the rest of the open slots. Yeah, maybe that'll be enough trucks. I mean, eight trucks seems like a pretty considerable number as is. And honestly, yeah, it'll probably be absolutely fine. It'll probably be absolutely fine. And again, this is future proofing. If in fact we can't get uh, we can't get the harvesters out to the field this year, I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why on earth we wouldn't be able to get the harvesters out because they're definitely kicking around. Where are you? Yeah, you're definitely in this building somewhere, but uh, but apparently just not keen on working. Very, 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 very strange indeed. Okay, well, that is that. Okay, how are we doing in uh, in Aluminov? 
How are we doing in Illuminov? I want to see. I want to see how things are, how things are cooking over here. Because ideally, I'd like to see a little bit of building progress. That's kind of what I'm, kind of what I'm, uh, I'm looking to see here. Uh, we're probably going to want to end up getting a university in this vicinity as well. A couple of people aren't able to enjoy culture. Did I actually place down a small cinema over here? If I didn't, I should have. And therefore, I think that we should probably rectify that. I did place down a small cinema. Yeah, I did place down a small cinema for sure. So, uh, I don't know what people are complaining about. There is nothing to complain about as far as I'm aware. But we're working on the, the medium transport, uh, the medium transport station, the medium train station. So, that's pretty darn good. Uh, we'll, you know, happily, actually, if required, we will, uh, we will adjust our strategy. We'll buy some new trucks if indeed it's needed. One thing that I'm immediately noticing is that the length of time that it's taking for the excavators to get to where they need to go is ridiculous. Uh, also, we've run out of dollars, which is um, a problem. That's, I guess, the polite way of putting it. Let me, let me do something real quick. I'm going to get an open hull truck, and we're going to get one, two, three, four of those. And that should help. Uh, that should help moving resources around slightly faster. Where, where the heck are all my, uh, where the heck are all my dollars going? I need to take out another loan. I really do not want to take out another loan. Two hundred thousand for zero point five years. A, a rate of three point one percent. This is an aggressive, an aggressive repayment schedule. Um, I presume that most of our money is just going onto construction materials, and so therefore we need to be super, super careful about it. Um, we also, you know, we want to get we want to get some of these construction materials produced locally. We're already doing prefab panels. And this is a good this is a good thing to start with, actually, in terms of uh, in terms of simplifying and in terms of just making sure that we. Uh, we are able to make as much as we possibly can in-house. So, prefab panels here. Prefab panels here can definitely be made locally. Bricks. Why are we not transporting more bricks to... Why are we not transporting more bricks here? That's the distribution office that moves resources over to Illuminov. And this is bricks. How many trucks are... Oh, no, no, no. Do not demolish the building. How many trucks are actively engaged in this process? So we've got two trucks. Two trucks that are a way to deliver bricks. So that's that's good. Let's actually, let's actually widen the scope. Let's actually widen the scope of this a little bit more. And let's say... Whoops. What did I end up selecting? I don't think I selected anything. Uh, so this can be the pickup point. We'll say load... Load if storage percent is... That needs to be... That needs to be lowered, I think. Yeah, that needs to be lowered. And so... Or does it need to be increased? Aha! Uh -huh, okay, alright. No, I think it needs to be... I think it needs to be lowered. Okay. So, unload if storage percent is... Is below... What did I say? 30? 30%? The thing is that I'm not sure if it's 30% of the total storage or if it's 30% of, uh, of the amount of space that is allocated. Either way, it doesn't particularly matter right now. Prefab panels. Let's get prefab panels to be loaded up here. And we also want to make sure that we unload prefab panels and bricks. You know what? Let's just remove the customs house connection. Let's not actually worry about exporting from the customs house. Because otherwise, it's just going to get a little bit too complicated. So if I increase this, will this... Will this activate either of these two trucks? Or do I need to decrease it before it'll activate the two trucks? I, I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. It doesn't, it doesn't particularly matter. Look, here's the thing. We're at least producing uh, prefab panels and bricks both locally. We're not going to export any more bricks. It doesn't actually matter because we're we're able to turn mostly turn a dollar profit by using um, by using power export, which I am kind of hoping to continue. Uh, and in fact, getting the second coal power plant up and running and exporting that power as well would be pretty darn incredible if we can do that. But uh, but no guarantees on that front. No guarantees on that front quite yet. 
We'll have to wait and see. Perhaps getting another small distribution office just to to take the overflow bricks and the overflow prefab panels to the uh, to the border would be good. However, as I say, we're not going to worry about that altogether too much at this moment in time. All right, cool, good stuff. Right. So anyway, so that brings us to that brings us to a position. That brings us to a position where theoretically, theoretically, we're producing our own bricks, but the bricks are not being moved here, which is just so unbelievably frustrating. Like, the bricks... The bricks are just not being moved here. The bricks are just not being moved here. They're being picked up, and they're being taken to uh, Aluminov, which is grand, you know? It's very, very nice indeed. But... When the destination building... When the destination building has less than 20%, Less than 90%. We want to we wanna bump that up then. Okay, so we, we do want that to be high. We do want that to be high. When storage percent is... Take that down. Load when storage is above 30%. Sure. Is that going to activate things? That's going to activate things. Okay, finally. I've got, my, I've got my brain properly screwed on. Now we're moving 40 tons of bricks across. That's excellent. Let's freaking go... We need to be moving prefab panels. We need to be moving bricks over here with alarming regularity because otherwise we're just going to continue to spend those dollars on uh, on importing resources from the border. And admittedly, it may very well be cheap, but um, but it all it all adds up. You know, it all adds up. Uh oh, video game? Have you decided to freeze on me? Uh, video game? The video game has frozen. The video game has frozen on me, folks. This is a disaster. This is not good. Uh, okay, all right. I gotta, I gotta hit it with a quick little reload. We'll, uh, we'll rejoin in just a second. Right. Okay. So, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by the video game crashing. There. Uh, that brings us to a point where we have prefab panels. We're going to be moving them into this storage area. We have bricks. We're going to be moving them into this storage area. We do not have boards, and we do not have steel. So that is kind of like my my goal for this episode. Can we manage? Can we manage to produce both boards and steel over the course of this episode? Well, I mean, we're absolutely going to try. We're going to start with boards because I actually think that boards are probably going to be... Uh, the easiest thing to do. I mean, that doesn't surprise. That doesn't surprise anyone, does it? I mean, that does not surprise anyone. I mean, if anyone has ever played this game before, you'll know. Uh, boards are boards are much easier than uh, than steel. Okay, it's in various industry. We've got to we got to get the wood cutting post and we got to get the sawmill down. Fabric factory and the clothing factory. Man, I haven't thought about those in a good long time. I have not thought about those in a good long time. However. However, we already have we already have a route set up over here. I wonder if it's just straight up worth us using this infrastructure to transport that we're using to transport people to the heating plant. Instead, we maybe stick down a bus stop over here and then we link up a sawmill. I actually think that that's a really really good idea because I want the boards to be made somewhat near somewhat near to Rostovsky, just because that's where most of the construction um, and the distribution center actually is. So that would be a great first step. Yeah, so we'll connect up the bus stop. We'll connect up a bus stop. We'll build this all automatically, as I don't think that there is necessarily a reason to hold off and uh, and wait for the, the construction to occur. I would like to plan this out a little bit. So we'll get a single woodcutting post down over there. And that's fine. And then a sawmill. A sawmill to go... Like, here, if we can, I guess? I guess it's a little bit of a... A little bit of an inconvenient... A little bit of an inconvenient hill. I mean, I... I don't hate that as a place. Um, it just makes the... Just makes the factory connection a little bit funky. I mean, if we... If we can make the factory connection work, if we can make the factory connection work, then this would be this would be an excellent place to have uh, to have a sawmill. And actually, that that's pretty good. That's pretty good because it allows us to slip a road just behind the woodcutting post, which I uh, which I really like the idea of. 
There we go. Easy peasy. In fact, that actually looks almost intentional, which is a surprising accomplishment for me. Uh, and then next, this is, yeah, this is basically what I was kind of thinking. We, uh, we see if we can slip a storage facility around the back here. Maybe use it to flatten the ground a little bit. I mean, this house is, is a bit of a joke anyway. And a little bit redundant now that we've got a proper bus service in place. Supplying... Supplying people to the heating plants. There we go. Flatten this a little bit. I should probably just delete the house, but... I kind of like having it there just in case we need to absolutely uh, fill the heating plant with employees, like... At the, at the absolute last moment. Uh, also something that I'm now realizing. The walk route. The walk route into the sawmill is going to be a little bit of a problem. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit dicey there actually. Because we need to find some way to connect up. Connect up a walk route over here. I guess we could just like swing around the uh, swing around the storage facility that we're about to build. Yeah, let's go for that. Okay, level height from center. Let's get this leveled. Again, probably not the most convenient place to do it, but uh, but it's fine. Okay, let's give let's give that a crack. Let's get a road built over here, or at least try and build a road over here. I don't actually think that it's going to be too difficult to do. Yep, that's actually kind of perfect. 3,000 rubles to build that. I don't even know how much a sawmill actually costs to build. Both in real life and also in the game. I have I have no conception. Uh, right, so this is, the, this is the questionable part here. This is the questionable part. Is this going to be the right length? You know what? Truthfully, I think that it will be. Truthfully, I think that it will be. I think that it'll be absolutely fine. Okay, build it. Let's build this 13,000 rubles. Let's build this. Excellent. How much does the sawmill cost? 23,000? I can smell another little bridging loan just to tide us, uh, to tide us over here. I mean, maybe not, but, like, we also need to buy trucks, right? We also need to buy trucks for the, uh, for the woodcutting post. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Hmm, indeed. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's... Let's buy the trucks first. Let's buy the trucks first. Not, uh, not western trucks. Just local trucks, thanks. I mean, it doesn't particularly matter what truck we buy. One, two, two trucks. Two trucks. Two trucks is probably overkill. Two trucks is probably overkill. That's fine. All right, let's have a little look at all of the vehicles that we currently have on this route. Let's view the line, and then let's adjust the line. So instead of going to the heating plant, we're instead going to go to the bus stop, get out and in. Excellent. Wonderful. Let's, uh, let's give it a crack. I mean, we could just build this locally, actually. We could build this locally. I hadn't really considered the uh, the prospect of doing that. I mean, it would be good to get a couple of a couple of bits and bobs delivered. It keeps costs down, even if it is just a, a tiny little bit of concrete or a tiny little bit of gravel. It will reduce the, the amount of money that we eventually end up having to pay. Yeah. What the heck, eh? What the heck? Okay, so we should have plenty of... Plenty of people arriving in buses to work at the heating plants. I don't know. Yeah, it's 30 it's 30 max workers. 30 max workers here. It looks like yep, absolutely categorically the sawmill is within range, which is excellent. And we're going to start work on that. Only thing that worries me, are we going to need more people to work in the heating plant than we currently have allocated? I don't think that we do. I I think that it should be fine as is. I think that it should be completely fine as is. Something else that we need to consider is we have, what, 800 and, 800 and something tons of wood. I'm going to preemptively, I'm going to preemptively seed some, uh, seed some trees over here. I have no idea if this costs anything. I don't think that it does, but I'm going to, I'm going to seed trees. I'm going to seed trees over here. Hopefully this doesn't crash the game. 
Uh, it doesn't reduce the pollution, but it does mean that the amount of uh, the amount of wood that the sawmill is going to be able to cut will be drastically increased once all of this stuff is actually uh, is actually fully grown, which is uh, which is kind of nice. Okay, I'm anticipating that this sawmill is going to be built rather swiftly, actually. In the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's going to take very long at all. We are dipping very, very close to, uh, to zero cash over here. That does perturb me. That does perturb me because it means that we are just one big purchase away from completely running out of rubles. Um, which is not surprising. Which is not surprising at all, but it is... It is irritating. Uh, we are definitely, almost certainly, going to run... Actually, I tell you what, we're not going to run out of dollars. We're not going to run out of dollars because we got plenty of dollars. And we use dollars to uh, to import the steel. We use dollars to import the steel. It's mostly... It's mostly just food that I think that we're importing with the rubles. That's kind of nice. Oh, look at that. Autumn is coming. Autumn is coming at a very, very, very rapid pace. Which is good, too. Oh my goodness. Where do our rubles keep going? They keep disappearing. They keep dis disappearing down to zero. It's terrifying. It's absolutely, absolutely blooming terrifying. Uh, we have maxed out our alcohol storage here. That is a big problem. That is a big problem. Are we, are we exporting? Are we exporting alcohol to the border? Because we absolutely should. Did we not have, like, an overflow setup over here at this end as well? I thought we did. I thought we did have an overflow setup where we exported things to the border. Huh. Um. Yeah. No, apparently not. Okay, so we have, like, a full, a full load of alcohol here. But, uh... But that's really unfortunate because that means that the boats are not able to dock and therefore are not able to unload food and meat, both of which we actually seem to need. Yeah. Also, we need to eventually turn this beach on, um, but we haven't done that thus far. Disneyland off road cargo station. Yeah, large customs house. This is this is the large cust. This is the one. Disneyland off warehouse. Tourist shopping center. Okay. This distribution office, this distribution office is only equipped to sell meats. But we could... We could take... We could take two trucks from here. Which is, I think, exactly what I'm going to do. Take two trucks from here. Just yoink them into this distribution office. And once they have been allocated, we should be able to... We should be able to just basically load if storage percent of meats of food of alcohol is above 90 percent then we will we will just sell it at the border which border is it it's the yeah it's the soviet border there okay so that's good that's good i think that's a real step in the right direction and i honestly thought that that was already in place it turns out that it was already in place for meats but it wasn't in place for uh, for anything else and now we've got a overflowing amount of alcohol which is um in most societies uh, a terrible problem uh, in my society it is um it is a tuesday it is a uh, it is a freaking tuesday so there you go that's that's where we are that's where we are all right tourist touristville touristville and by touristville i mean disneyland Ovsk is looking great uh, we don't have any people staying in these hotels yet, but that's because the shuttle service just still ain't working. It's it's borked. And by borked, I mean I still think that we need more workers, right? Like, the workers are prioritizing working in uh, in these in these hotels over here. Uh, but that's, uh, that's no longer good enough. Ooh, something else that I should mention. I installed a couple of... I installed a couple of mods in the downtime between uh, between episodes. So we actually have two brand new hotels. One is this Lenin Gradskia Hotel, which is, I mean, just an absolute beast. 
an absolute beast. Uh, and we've also got this hotel building, which is a little bit less beastly, but still, uh, still fairly cool. Attraction score of 50. I don't know what attraction score is good, but I mean, I would dearly love to get one of these buildings. And in fact, uh, it's just about where the heck we're going to put it. Because I want to put it, I want to put it like, you know, close enough that we're able to get the full benefit from it. I might destroy a little bit of this thoroughfare because it looks like, it looks like the road spacing is almost perfect to allow this building to, to just sort of sit in here. Maybe even somewhere like, somewhere like this. Yeah, I think that we're probably going to need to redevelop um, Disneyland Ovsk at some point. Or alternatively, maybe we just sort of redevelop another half of Disneyland Ovsk. And then that will sort of allow us to place down more facilities and more buildings at a later date. We might. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, it looks like we're finally curing all of our uh, alcohol supply issues, which is great. We got 6.5 tons of food. I have a funny feeling that we might be running low on food in uh, in Potato Grad. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little look at that real quick. Oh my goodness! Look at Potato Grad Technical University. Oh my giddy ant! That is fantastic. We're waiting on one last delivery of concrete, and then we'll be able to start researching stuff. It's important, by the way, that we get this uh, university up and running because 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 this is the place that we do the uh, the research. This is the place that we do the research. Uh, food. Food factory. Food, 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 food factory. Loading alcohol. Cool. How much food do we have uh, sitting here? We got loads of food and loads of alcohol. Hmm. Then why is, why is there a problem? Why is there a problem? I don't think that there should be any issues here. Yeah, I don't think that there should be uh, any issues at all. I think everything is... Everything is fine. Maybe we need a few more trucks here, but... I think that might be about it. Uh, and we can... We can do that. We can do that. Let me see if I can move a truck... To the small distribution office. This distribution office, by the way, controls uh, delivery of products from the industrial estate to the uh, to the shipping area. So it's important that we have. Oh, actually, look at this. Dump the cargo here. Move this to here. Yeah. There we go. Brilliant. Erase from line as well. And we move it right next door, and immediately it should activate and uh, and get to work moving alcohol and food across. So that's pretty good. I thought that I had, like, an overflow valve up here. Didn't I? Yeah, medium custom house if storage percent is above 80. I do have, I do have uh, a relief valve over here. So if storage percent is, uh, is above 80 on either alcohol or food, then we will unload at the customs house and that will provide us uh, a little bit of extra cash. Although it doesn't look like that is, uh, is being used altogether too often, which is good because, you know, fundamentally we want to be consuming uh, local food, local alcohol all the way over in Disney Landovsk and, uh, and that's still our priority. Where's our last delivery of concrete? I want to get this university up and running pronto, please. I suppose, actually, maybe we could have just... Maybe we just buy concrete at the border? Is that a thing that you can actually do? I don't think... No, okay, all right. You cannot actually buy concrete at the border. That's interesting. That would be cool if you could. Because then you could just... Uh, then you could just direct all of the cement trucks over that way instead. Which is, uh, which is pretty exciting, actually. But unfortunately, you can't do that, so we have to wait on a single delivery. A single delivery from quite literally the other side of the map. It's just one delivery, though. Let me see if I can try and find the truck. The reason that I want to find this, by the way as I've already said, is because the research is ever so important. It really is. Also, holy cow. 
Holy cow. Look at what we are building over here. This is... This is quite remarkable. This is quite remarkable. It is taking rather a long time, however. It is taking rather a long time. I tell you what, why don't I add... Yeah, add this. 3,000 meters. I'm just trying to inspire these trucks to actually uh, get to work. That would be pretty exceptional. But I mean, we've got loads of steel, we got loads of prefab panels, we got loads of bricks, we got loads of boards. Uh, so just get to work, honestly, on the uh, the aluminium area. This is the truck. This is the truck. This is one half of the concrete that we need for the technical university. Okay. Also, uh, where have my dollars just disappeared to? Where the heck have my dollars disappeared to? I must have almost paid back all of these loans. I must have almost paid back all of these loans. I swear that I do nothing but pay back loans. It's a disaster. It's, well, it's not a disaster. Far from it, actually. It's, it's completely fine. It is completely fine. Uh, prefab panels. We cannot ex we cannot export prefab panels. I mean, this is kind of to be expected. This is, this is what happens when we don't have, when we don't have, like, an overflow system in place. We end up just wasting production. And this is why I kind of want to export prefab panels. Even if they don't make a, a tremendous amount of money, I still think that it's probably a worthwhile thing to do. Uh, just to try and export them. This distribution office not being active means that we should have more than enough prefab panels and bricks. And indeed, that is backed up by uh, by the truth. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to buy a new... A new, uh, a new depot. What is it called? Yeah, one of these things. Small distribution office. Plonk that down over here. How much does this cost to build? 19k. I mean, I feel like maybe I shouldn't be as close to the ground as I actually am. Also, I am uh, going to be penalized unless I take out another loan. And uh, I'll take out a loan for 800,000 uh, 800, rubles. Yeah, let's not actually... Uh, let's not actually... Let's not actually uh, be penalized, please. I really do not want to see my rate of interest uh, climb any higher than perhaps it needs to. And it's already probably high enough. It's it's already probably high enough. The, the debt repayments are fairly significant, uh, I would suggest. Let's do something ridiculous, shall we? Open hull, page two, five Maz trucks. I know that's a lot of that's a lot of Maz trucks for somebody who has so little money, but it's actually pretty important that we do this. So if storage percent is above, if storage percent is above eighty percent, then we will take resources and we will sell them on the border for dollars. It's it's that simple. It's that simple. Uh, we're doing the same with uh, with cement, which is great. And I suspect that we are going to see all five of these mass trucks, yep, immediately jump into action and provide us with uh, with a few extra dollars, which is which is actually quite nice and uh, and quite necessary, because if we're able to get on top of our if we're able to get on top of our dollars, then we'll be we'll be in a grand position. How are we doing for fuel? I'm surprised that we actually have that little fuel. I would really love more fuel, to be honest. What's happening in Krudinovsky? What's happening in Krudinovsky? Uh, I mean, things are happening. It's just not not going blisteringly quickly. We got a lot of... Oh, these tankers are... What the heck is happening? They're kind of stacked up on top of one another? Don't really understand what's happened there. Um, But there we go, I guess. Uh, we got a lot of we got a lot of fuel that needs to be processed and not a lot of fuel processing actually happening even with three refineries uh, There is still Shockingly little actually happening. I think the solution to this as everyone will probably be able to to guess uh, Is is actually just buying a brand new Buying a brand new prefabricated flat probably in this vicinity somewhere plonking it down and uh and getting a whole bunch of brand new citizens to join up. I say join up like they have a choice. They absolutely do not. Okay. 
So let's do this. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is good. Also, we need to go and check on our sawmill in just uh, in just a second, because that, that needs a little bit of work as well. Although it's mostly, it's mostly fixed. It's mostly fixed. Right. So, 21 story flat. I will be very surprised if I can't find a single place to slot this, uh, to slot this block into. Really? I, I mean, like, I am very, very surprised. Very, very surprised indeed. Uh, we can still, we can still make this work though. It just requires a little bit of, a little bit of finessing, I'll say. Yeah, cool. All right. So that goes down over there. And then that goes over there. We build that. Wonderful. Let's get that built. Let's get that built. Again, I need to be careful not to spend all of my rubles, but it only costs 30k for the house. And uh, this is going to be... It's going to be absolutely worthwhile. Actually, that that's terrible. I should just build a road. I should just build a road so that we have easier... Oh, for... For goodness sake. Really? That's too sharp of a turn? I refuse. I refuse to believe that that is the case. Uh, I was away to say in case the fire brigade actually ever need access, but I'm pretty sure that they can just get access via via paths, but hey-ho. Okay, let's, let's import as many immigrants as we possibly can. It's going to cost a very, very large amount of cash, uh, but it will, at the end of the day, end up being totally worthwhile. I suspect, yep, I suspect that walking access is totally possible to all of the refineries. And that will end up paying huge dividends. I actually think that it's going to end up paying huge dividends a lot more quickly than perhaps uh, might otherwise be suggested. Yeah, so with just this sheer crazy amount of fuel that we're going to be able to produce, it should allow us to start thinking about the possibility of exporting fuel. Which is very, very exciting, actually. Very, very exciting indeed. Okay, 11 workers without a job, 36 workers without a job. I don't think that that's necessarily accurate. I, I think that there is... I think that there is a good chance. I think that there is a good chance that we're going to be able to... That we're going to be able to find a job for everyone. I mean, it's 150. It's 150 uh, working, working spaces in these three refineries alone. Small heating plant is still fine. How on earth this prefab flat is consistently running out of people, I, I just do not understand. No kindergarten spaces available. There definitely are kindergarten spaces available. Um... Okay, fine. Either way, I, I still think it's going to end up being worthwhile. I still think it's going to end up being worthwhile. Still pretty pretty good, pretty important. The only thing that perhaps worries me is the fact that this road... The fact that this road to the, uh, to the bitumen is linked with the fuel, which means that if there is ever a case, or if there is ever a time where the, uh, the, the bitumen pickup trucks are not able to are not able to get over here. Oh, wait, what's up? Global market report. The price of oil on the global market rises up. Uh, is that good for us? Is that good for us? I mean, maybe we should export oil? Maybe we could think about exporting oil? I know it's just raw, unprocessed. I probably, probably isn't going to be uh, fantastically profitable to do anyway. Have a little look. I mean, it's increased by a fair chunk, you know, 15, 15 rubles. It looks like 15 rubles a, uh, 15 rubles a unit. What was it hanging around? It was hanging around at roughly like 35, 45. Yeah, and now, uh, and now it's, it's definitely up near 60 actually, yeah. I, I still probably don't think it's worth it. I still don't think it's worth it, but hey-ho. Anyway, this is definitely going to make a big old difference. This is definitely going to make a big old difference. Hopefully, it uh, it continues to perform well for us because we we want the fuel to export. We want the fuel to use locally. We want the fuel pretty much everywhere that we possibly can. Uh, we're continuing to export prefab panels, which is great. Actually, pretty fantastic. Actually, pretty fantastic. If only prefab panels were uh, were a little bit better priced on the market, then we could uh, we could actually make some money off them. But as it stands, it's not the end of the world. We're still going to be able to export them for dollars at the 
at the border there. We have a sawmill up and running. Now. Now, 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 now. Are we able to export wood? We're able to export wood. We're actually... We've actually got 131 tons of boards already. Uh, it's just taking a little while. It's just taking a little while to get all of the wood completely sorted at the uh, at the woodcutting post. Uh, we can rectify that actually by grabbing by grabbing another open hull truck. A A T T. Is this better? 25 tons of wood? 12 tons of wood? I'm gonna see, actually. Yeah, let's have a little look-see. Oh, wow. This is a proper piece of kit, actually. Felled tree capacity. Speed slash level is 30. Whereas the speed level of the T-138 is uh, is much less. Okay, I actually think that maybe we want to sell the, uh, the T-138s. I think I'm gonna do that. I don't think I'd usually do this, but... Uh, but I'm going to sell them both because I don't really foresee a need. And I know that it's going to put us under, you know, yet more financial strain. But straight up, I think that it's almost certainly worth us worth us doing it. Okay, we have 670 tons of trees that have already been felled that are waiting to be picked up. Plus all of this new crop that I, that I planted. Uh, that's pretty exciting. That's very, very exciting, in fact. Cannot wait until this is all grown, and then the amount of wood in the forest is going to be uh, is going to be much higher. We do seem to have enough people working at the heating plant, which is which is great. We probably yeah we probably are still moving far too many workers actually out to this bus stop here, so we may have to consider that in the future. Um, but you know for now it's for now it's completely fine. Honestly, if I could just make a few more dollars, if I could just make a few more dollars from exporting all of the bricks and the prefab panels and whatnot, that would be really, really, really excellent. So if that could happen at some point today, video game, then I would be, I would be ever so grateful. I would be, I would be really, really chuffed. Uh, yeah, so next thing that we need to do, next thing that we need to do is we need to set up this distribution office. Yes, this distribution office. So this is the distribution office that we're actually using to take the prefab panels and the bricks to the to the storage down at the border. So let's just let's just get it to also transport the boards. There we go. Is above 10% boards and then we want to say boards over there. Immediately we should see these trucks springing into action. And that is that is looking good. Okay, so two trucks have been dispatched. I suspect that it calculates. I suspect that it calculates the ninety percent based on what percentage of prefab panels of the allocated space. So it'll be like ninety percent of the twenty-five percent. And so for the boards, since it's less than ninety percent of the eighty-two tons, it means that we're gonna we're gonna see a delivery of boards happening. Uh, so now that's another thing that we are producing entirely locally. Which is kind of remarkable, actually. Kind of remarkable that we were able to build the sawmill ourselves. Honestly, very, very surprised that that, it, that, that even ended up happening. Um, yeah, very, very surprised. New vehicle type available. There's a brand new tractor on the market. Oh, that's, that's very, very exciting indeed. Uh, the other thing that we perhaps want to consider doing... The other thing that we perhaps want to consider doing is getting this road upgraded... I say getting this road upgraded, but uh, but what I actually mean is getting a faster is getting a faster road so that we can hopefully deliver resources slightly faster. There we go. So let's do something like this. Do something like this, and then we'll like merge into there. Okay, let's zone that. Let's actually straight up just get uh, a couple of offshoot roads. So that means that each and every bit of this road should be accessible, and we're gonna speed up. We're gonna speed up access to primarily the resource, the resource delivery areas. I mean, we've got all of the resources that we need, right? We have 100% locally produced gravel. Surprisingly, though, surprisingly, we don't have more gravel stored over here. That's a bit weird, but whatever. Uh, we've got loads and loads of bitumen. In fact, we've got an absolute excess of bitumen, and it's pretty much just—it's pretty much just gravel, 
and, uh, and bitumen that we need in order to make this entire process work. Which is kind of nice. Okay. Uh, do we have... Hold on. Yeah, we do have a distribution office. We do have a distribution office that's currently... That's currently in action. Are all the trucks out? Yeah, I guess all of the trucks are actually out. I suspect that there is such high demand for the gravel because gravel is so far away. Uh, the gravel deliveries have to go so far away, I guess. Because they have to go all the way over to, uh, to Illuminov. Which is going to take a little while. And I guess the gravel in the meantime is going gonna, is gonna to just deplete over here. I guess it kind of makes sense, but... Uh, but whatever, I guess. Either way, we are going to be able to build this road blisteringly quick. Which bodes well for when we eventually have to upgrade the entirety of the high street in Turistovsky. With uh, with lights and, and asphalt road and whatnot. So, you know, that's, that's just a matter of time. Uh, also, this here. Let's get this assigned. And let's say... Nice. 80% boards. Yeah, cool. So we're now going to also be able to export boards if indeed this storage thing goes above if this open storage goes above 80% as well. We can stick that on we can stick that on the uh, on the market at the customs house, which is very very cool indeed. I tell you what, this is another area. This is another area that is crying out, absolutely crying out for a brand new a brand new super duper highway. I think this is, I think this is brilliant, actually. What about a tunnel? What about a tunnel through the... What about a freaking tunnel through the mountain? If I have a little look at the wireframe, can we perhaps get a slightly better... Slightly better angle? Uh, there is a fire. That's okay, it's, it's never, never perturbed me before about the fire. Uh, fires have never, never really worried me. Oh, that was an angle. That's an angle right there. That's gonna take a long time. That's gonna take a long, long time. I'm actually gonna queue it up. I'm actually gonna queue it up. We're actually gonna build it. This is, this is very, very important. Very, very important indeed. Again, all of this stuff is gonna be done locally, right? All of this stuff is gonna be done locally. I mean, what do we require for the tunnel? Ah, 15 tons of steel. 26 tons of steel. That's a lot of steel. That's a lot of steel. Unfortunately, I, I don't think it's possible for us to... I don't think it's possible for us to to do tunnel construction without steel. Which is pretty irritating, but that's okay. I mean, you know, the vast majority of this is going to be... Uh, is going to be buildable in a nice quick time. And you know what? The fact that we got a tunnel underground is is pretty cool. It's something to look forward uh, to. Oh, yes. Very, very important news. Very, very important news. Uh, oh, yeah, the fire. Let me let me fix the fire first. It's at the rail construction office. This is a very, very key bit of infrastructure. Uh, really? It's not within range? Are you having a giggle? It should be within range. It says it's in range. It's in range of the walk route. Hold on. Is that now within range? It's now within range. Okay, there we go. The trucks the trucks are en route. I'm actually going to have to upgrade this uh, this road. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to we're not going to be able to get uh, get the fire trucks fast enough, I don't think. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's 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 really good. If we weren't able to if we weren't able to put the fire out here, then I would be seriously seriously worried. I'd much rather just spend a couple of bob and get uh, and get a nice gravel road. We might have been fine actually with the with the terrible road, but uh, again, you know, better safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. Let's just make sure that we absolutely have the means to to put the fire out here because it is very very important. Okay, we're going to have a super lightning fast road over there, which is great. 
We'll have a pretty cool road over here too, with a correspondingly super large tunnel. And actually, probably will not start to drag on our finances, i.e. that is the, the tunnel construction. Probably won't start to, dry, uh, to drag on our, uh, on our finances for a little while, because it's going to be a little while before we finish the, uh, the ends of the, of the tunnel first, the access points. Okay, Potato Grad Technical University is up and running. So what do we got to research? Engineering and chemistry. Well, chemistry is probably the most important thing for us in the short term. Although, I do notice that there is nobody that is qualified to teach people. Uh, now, this is actually fine. This is actually completely fine. Actually completely fine. Do we have, um... Do we have any spare houses? We don't actually have any spare houses. Hmm. Turns out that Potato Grad is actually doing okay for itself. There's something funky about that. There's something funky about that. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Let's build a 21-story prefab flat. We'll build it actually over here. I think that that should be within range of the supermarket. It's not. It's it's not. It's ever so slightly out with out with the range. Okay, you know what? I should I should just abandon ship here. Yeah, just uh, just find somewhere else, potato. Just find somewhere else. Okay, uh, maybe like in here. We'll relocate these people to like this area. Sure, ditch that. Cancel this path. And then we'll also just delete this path because I know that it's just going to cause confusion and cause an issue. But what we'll do is we'll plonk down one of these. Pause the game for a brief second. I'm also acutely aware of the fact that it is turning into winter very, very quickly. So we got to be real, real careful. There we go. And let's get that built. 30k. Uh, that's going to straight up require more money than we have. Uh, let's take a little tiny bridging loan this time. One year, 50k. One year, 50k. Let's do it. And then let's fund the rest of this 21-story prefab flat. The great thing is, is that I shouldn't need to... I shouldn't need to import uh, anyone to live here. Because we already have the training capability, the training capacity at Turistovsky. So we should have, like, plenty of educated people over here. Look at this. Look at this. Like, a sixth of the entire population is fully educated. How wonderful is that? Okay. Uh, here's, what we'll, here's what we'll do. We will move people with university degrees. We've got 28 people that live in this building with university degrees. And we'll just stick them right in here. Uh, we probably want a few more people than that, to be honest with you. 32, 47, okay. Cool. So 47 people with a university degree in this flat in Turistovsky. Let's, uh... Excuse me? It's not, it's not doing it. No, oh, apparently it is. No idea what happened there. Uh, but now we've got uh, a whole bunch of people that are actually educated. Uh, it's just not within range of the university. Oh, video game. Uh, we can fix that, though. We can fix that. There we go. What do you know? Okay, that'll definitely bring it within range of the university. Yeah, 200 and 298 meters. Professors working with higher education. Yep, I know we're about to do it. We're about to get there. Let's let's freaking do it. There we go. Wonderful. Okay. So, do I really want to allocate many resources towards researching, or do I perhaps want to prioritize teaching in the in the short term? I think honestly, I'm kind of fine with this allocation. 
It's winter already. Oh my goodness. Okay, we gotta be we gotta be super 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 careful about uh, about deaths. Okay. 176. I believe, by the way, that the death rate and the birth rate have been nerfed in uh, in an update. So far, so good, by the way. Nothing, nothing crazy. Escapes. There are a few escapes. Yeah, don't don't love the fact that there are escapes, but uh, but that's okay. I mean, this looks this looks completely, completely, completely fine. And we're actually teaching a lot of people, which is which is really, really good. Very, very good indeed. And we're already 10% of the way through chemistry, which is excellent. I did see a little electricity flicker there. Is that perhaps a capacity issue in uh, in Kolovskysky? No. Yes, it is. It is. It's because the snowplows... Oh, it's because the snowplows haven't reached yet. Snowplows haven't reached, and therefore there is ever so slight, ever so slight issues with uh, with worker delivery. It does take the workers a little bit of extra time to get around. Yeah, that's okay though. That's okay. We still, I'm still pretty confident that we've got uh, the ratio just about right here. Right, rubles. We are low on rubles. Uh, amount overdue: three thousand nine hundred rubles. Can I not be overdue, please? I'm going to take out a five-year loan for 200,000 rubles. Look, it's okay. It's okay. We're only, we're only a little tiny bit in debt. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it, folks. Don't even freaking worry about it. Um, Dollar-wise, we are, I, I guess, also kind of in a little bit of a weird place. We do have a little bit of... We do have uh, some overdue... Some overdue repayments. We're pretty much... We're pretty much done with this loan, though. We're pretty much done with this loan. We're almost done with that loan. We're over halfway through that loan. I mean, look. I think we're gonna take out another loan. 200000 $200,000. Very, very small amount of money. And that should tide us over. Until uh, until all of our exports come good, which you know undoubtedly will take much longer than I'm anticipating. Uh, the road that we're working on is is looking fine. This road over here is also looking fine, and in fact, it's already it's already in use as the uh, as the primary mode of construction. Now, this serves two purposes actually, uh, because it means that we can go to the uh, where is it technical services? Yeah, asphalt roads need to be need to be. Uh, need to be bumped up as a preference and hopefully that should immediately get fixed and should therefore we should be cleaning this road uh, a little bit a little bit more regularly this is looking good though this is looking good we're almost finished up with this road too excellent 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 indeed okay everything is fine everything is fine there are there are no issues there were no deaths last time that I checked Last month, the number of deaths were a little bit higher than perhaps normal, but, I mean, still within the realm of... I'm okay with this. Uh, there's 10 deaths over the course of today alone. I still think this is okay. I still think this is okay. Our population is holding roughly steady. If, if we don't have huge death numbers over the course of December, January, February, etc., um, then I will be I will be totally okay with that. I'll be totally okay with it, that. As long as births, more than deaths, and technically escapes, uh, we'll, we'll be just fine. We'll be absolutely just fine. Okay, I think, I think next time, next time on Orbital Potatoes, Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic series, uh, we're going to have to attempt, we're going to have to attempt the, uh, the steel, the steel production area. I know, I know, I know, I know. It is, it is the bit that I am most terrified of, uh, of doing. Steel production, steel production is, is a disaster, uh, oftentimes. Mostly because it is just so unbelievably complex. But we're gonna have to do it. We're absolutely gonna have to do it. Disneyland Ovs continues to make us, uh, an obscene amount of money. And is actually the only reason why we haven't gone completely in debt as of yet. 
I mean, let's have a little look. Tourism, tourism is making us really, really decent money. It's where all of our money is coming from at this moment in time. Uh, we need to expand it, but I guess that I'm just not overly concerned about expanding it at this moment in time because what we need is space more than anything to expand Disneyland off. But anyway, uh, the roadmap is steel. Uh, and whilst we are uh, whilst we are planning out the steel uh, stuff, hopefully that's going to allow uh, areas like uh, like Illuminov uh, to complete. We're we're working on the train station over there. Uh, we got the foundations done for a couple of these buildings, so that's uh, so that's really really good. And honestly, we're just we're just chilling. We're just chilling. We're just slowly but surely building out the uh, the glorious republic, and uh, and everyone seems pretty okay with it. And hopefully. Nobody's gonna die over the course of this winter and that would be and that would be just incredible Ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much for watching this episode of workers and resources Soviet Republic uh, My name of course has been over the potato Thank you as ever to all the support over on the patreon page patreon.com forward slash over the potato Thanks to banana nana and sc senpai and aurelio for being the 325 plus tier patrons. Thank you very much for watching folks. I'll see you next time Bye